Statistics today say about 14% of Canadians live with a physical, sensory, or cognitive impairments. Although I suspect it is even higher, in the States it's one in four. So it kind of depends on maybe how you define that. But yet, consistently, when governments make spending cuts, this is one of the areas that almost always gets cut or frozen. It seems that our society still views citizens with disabilities as an optional responsibility as a nation. Now, thankfully, churches and Christian organizations are moving in the right direction these days in advocating and better supporting rights for our friends, our family members, and neighbors living with disabilities and for those who care for them. And if you work in the care sector for persons with disabilities yourselves, you know that over the last couple decades, standards and behaviors in caring have changed in the direction of better respect and more client-driven and centered care. Well, Christians need to be at the forefront of this kind of support and advocacy work. And within congregations, we need to continue to move toward modeling for our communities, our neighborhoods, what full inclusion and respect looks like in community. And so we strive for that. In the CRC, we have a funded and staffed Disabilities Concerns office. We have regional advocates. Our Classes Niagara advocate is Bethany member Glenda Bowers. Thank you very much for serving in that way. And we have also here then in Bethany, we have a Disabilities Awareness Team And one of the things they have done recently is to assess our accessibility in this facility. So far, it doesn't sound like a sermon, does it? You know, in all this journey in Canada, in the churches, the real positive change for persons with disabilities comes when attitudes toward disability change. And attitudes change most deeply when our hearts and minds change. And our hearts and minds change most fundamentally when the Lord by His Spirit convicts our hearts of sinful things, perspectives, or attitudes, or behaviors, and leads us in repentance, which means changing what we do, and reconciliation into those who perhaps we have hurt, and into new ways of life together. That sounds a little bit more like a sermon, right? Maybe some of you are thinking, okay, that's fine. We'll get to the actual preaching, please. I didn't come this morning for a history lesson or about political or social rights. But let me remind you of something. In the gospel of Jesus Christ, it is never either or with those things. The ministry of the gospel given by the mercy of God for kingdom life in this world is for the actual real life that we live day to day in neighborhoods, in communities, in a society, in a country. Bearing witness also in how we treat others and what God has done for all of us and what he calls us to. You see, in what we read from 2 Corinthians this morning, we are reminded and convicted of the fact that there are not two categories of people, some enabled, some disabled. There is only one. We are all jars of clay. We are all jars of clay. Paul, the great missionary and New Testament writer, the great church planter, the leader, Discipler, public champion of Christ, the Apostle Paul writes this of the powerful, amazing, glorious gospel, good news of Jesus Christ. He says, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We, all of us, temporarily abled or disabled, all of us are these jars of clay. Remember way back at the start that a person with a disability was in Canada at one time seen as incapable of normal life in society, would have to always be dependent on others to live. Therefore, segregate them out to offer that care a little bit away. Sadly, I believe that view of disabled persons has not really left us in who we are in Canada. Think individually, think personally. Think of what you think. Think of what comes to mind 
when you see someone walking along in that stilted fashion on two crutches strapped to their forearms? Or what the thoughts flashing through your mind go when you see someone with a white cane? What pops in there? I think if we're honest, there's always a moment of pity and at least a sense of difference and distance between yourself and that person. A difference rooted in their visible disability. In a way, in that way, we sort of institutionalize that person into another category of person separated from regular people. And in our context this morning of disability awareness, Paul's category of jars of clay radically removes all this separation and brings us all together. We have this treasure in jars of clay. God's love and mercy in Christ Jesus brings to light the reality that we are not the source of that that we are all frail and weak in the face of the trials of life and the ravages of our sin. Now Paul is reflecting on his experiences of mission work and travel and the suffering that he has gone through, but we can this morning see these words also in light of various disability challenges we face in ourselves or with loved ones. So listen to Paul's description and think disabilities. He says, we are hard-pressed on every side. Is that not an accurate description of living with autism spectrum disorder? With the often overwhelming sensory input that never seems to end? Hard-pressed on every side. Jars of clay. He says, we are perplexed. Mental, emotional disabilities can leave us with unanswerable questions and our lives taking turns that make no sense to us. Persecuted. The ugliness of bullying or being made fun of because of hearing aids or thick lenses or inability to communicate well or behavioral differences because of a condition of a person and wanting that person to leave Even social and community barriers of access or opportunity can be experienced and often are experienced as persecution based on your disability. We are struck down, says Paul. The pulling of funding that cancels needed supports strikes down. The rejection of applications for work or the loss of jobs when disability enters the picture struck down. Paul is talking about real-life experiences of suffering that he endured that is common to all of us, jars of clay. But then he adds, in the mercy of God, by God's power that's not from us, we're just simple jars of clay. He also says, but we are not crushed, not in despair, not abandoned, not destroyed. And here's where our normal segregating attitude toward disability is deeply challenged. He says, because we always carry around in our body the death of Jesus in order that, so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body, our dying, broken, disabled bodies. Later on, he says, though outwardly we are wasting away, and we all are, inwardly we are being renewed. The reason he is saying that we have the ministry of God's mercy at work in and among each and every one of us and together as the body is so that in our clayness, God's glory can, in Christ can... Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus calls Paul and sends him out to be the missionary to the Gentiles and he's going all over the Mediterranean world. That why, why Jesus in all his power and might as the ascended ruling Lord did not protect Paul better from beatings and shipwrecks and attacks on his life, times of hunger and thirst and homelessness. Why did not God, who is over all, roll out the red carpet for Paul to bring the gospel wherever he went? Instead, hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. 
The Lord's reason, according to Paul here, is that by our limits, our weaknesses, including our disabilities, the power of the life of Jesus is more clearly shown to be the work of God in and through us and not our wonderful ability and strengths. So given that this is true, this is what the Word of God is saying here. Given that this is true, how necessary are persons with disabilities to the work of the Lord in this world? How necessary are they? Being any of us living with a disability, whether it's visible or to others or hidden from others, do we secretly long to be other than who we are because we secretly suspect that God would use us better if we didn't have this or that condition? That somehow we're stopping Him? And how can we together as the body of Christ bearing witness in this world, all of us jars of plain, fragile clay, counter that sense of inadequacy or failure to measure up? Well, we can do so by leveling the field, so to speak. And that work is both working in our minds and hearts and attitudes toward each other's disabilities and working on very practical things like Accessible washroom facilities, better hearing or sight assistive technology, understanding more deeply the experience of Asperger's or autism or PTSD or depression or whatever. It is standing alongside, together with persons with disabilities, and advocating in our country for adequate, dignified support in our communities in this country for everyone living with a disability. You see how this all comes together in real life? The grace and mercy of God does not set some of us above others in value before God, but places within each and every believer the light of Christ, which shines not from ourselves, but from the power of God. It's been a history, a long history journey, and we're still on the journey. I still have much to learn to be more faithfully disability aware in my own life, in my work. I know we all have much to learn together. And I would say now, too, I may very well have given offense to someone with a disability in this morning, in this sermon. It's not intentional. I ask your forgiveness, and I ask your help to help me learn. For the Lord has placed teachers among us for this. Any of us who live with a disability can teach others how to love better how to live more respectfully with each other, and how to support more wisely as we work at our communal calling to minister God's grace together in this world, all of us as one body in Christ. Let's pray. What an amazing God you are that in all your glory and wonder, your perfection your power and might, and the awesomeness of your will, you love us, jars of clay. So much so that you've placed in, in, among, and through us the treasure of the good news of that love. Help us, Lord, to be intentional, be thoughtful, and very practical in how we live out that love with one another as we stand together, as we bear witness in this society, whether it's through an election, whether it's advocating locally or provincially or federally, whether, Lord, it's standing up for those without a voice, and, Lord, whether it's just serving and sharing resources that you've blessed us with together. Help us to do that well and so bear witness so that others might look and see that this all-surpassing power is from you. And you are the one we praise and honor in glory. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise together and sing.
hearts before the Lord receive his word of blessing from 1 Peter 5. The God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. God's people say. Amen.